know those panda dunks. Whether you are a diehard sneakerhead or know absolutely nothing about them and stumble randomly on this video, chances are you've seen this pair of dunks at least once, but for most of you, there's a strong chance you've seen them dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of times. It's too much. Excuse me. When we think of the ultra mainstream sneaker that we see on everybody's feet, a few years ago we would have rather talked about the Air Force Ones, Converse, or even Vans, and it's quite logical they are very popular pairs that have been around for over 40 years, which have always been widely available in stores and distributed absolutely everywhere and all the time. Today among the long list of sneakers that we see everywhere, we are seeing a new challenger emerge, which are the Dunk Pandas. Now the Pandas is supposed to be a much less available pair with a bit more rarity than a pair of Vans and at the time that you watch this video there is about a hundred percent chance that the pair is totally out of stock at absolutely all sneaker distributors in the entire world. Despite this the Dunk and more specifically the Dunk Panda has became the favorite sneaker of an entire generation. We got some questions and they are all completely legitimate enough to ask why is this fairly inaccessible pair of shoes ending up on the feet of all young folk today? Why this particular dunk and no other. How and why did the hype around this pair appear and who are the people really wearing these fraudulent dunks? But seriously, what does the sneaker community really think of this pair that they seem to have greatly appreciated just two years ago? Well, we conducted our own little investigation and we tried to learn a little bit more about the history of this famous and coveted dunk. This is a new video and this time we are talking about a pretty recent craze in the sneaker world, the weird obsession among young consumers with the Dunk Pandas. If you've been into kicks for a while, you probably already know that the Dunks are usually a big basic from Nike's lineup and the Panda is no exception. I mean, it's not particularly a standout in terms of design and there are no hype collabs or exclusives to really bump it up. The Dunk Pandas are far from being ugly, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they were a head turner either. Oh, and to make matters much worse, the quality quality is seriously lacking for a pair that cost over a hundred bucks. But despite all of this, the Panda could sometimes even resell for over $300 a few months ago. I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? Okay, even if at first glance the Dunk Panda does not seem to have a lot to offer in order to stand out from the other pairs, it has nevertheless became by far the most popular Dunk. Hell, I would even say it's the sneaker of the moment. So how did we even get here? Well, there are definitely a few factors, and to discover the reasons behind the success of this pair, we will need to give you a bit more context. We will not be going back to the 80s to look at the entire history of Nike Dunks, but we do promise to do that in a future video. For now, what interests us the most is what happened after. Between 2017 and today, the Dunk surprisingly became a massive hit, and the reason for its success is actually closely linked to that of the Jordan 1s. The Jordan 1s have always been extremely popular, especially in the United States, but unfortunately not so much in Europe. Between 2019 and 2020, which wasn't that long ago, so you probably do still remember that the shoe really reached the peak of its popularity worldwide. From Off-White in 2017 to Travis Scott and dozens of other big names, we even even got the Air Dior to close off this huge hype phase, which shined the spotlight even brighter on this pair that was already been seen way too much. And of course, when Nike notices that a model is becoming too overhyped, they choose to bring out an old Arkov model that no one is really paying attention to that could easily fit into the current trend. Yeah, you got it. The best model that could be a good alternative to the Jordan 1s was the Dunk. So without hesitation, they decided to rapid fire the Dunk models and launch a whole new propaganda. So at first, they mainly highlighted the Dunk Highs, since as we said, the shoe was really meant to be an alternative to the Jordan 1s, and the popular Jordan 1s were not really the lows or the mids, but obviously the real Jordan 1s. We then had a whole propaganda campaign around the Dunk Highs, with rather colorful models at first, like the Syracuse for example, and the campaign was working quite well, since this kind of a shoe seemed to more or less please everyone. 70% of people really liked the model, and at the time when we thought of the Dunk, we thought of high colorful sneakers, a little like what we expect from the Jordan 1s in the end. But what really interests us is the very particular story of this certain colorway that everybody wrongly calls the Dunk Panda. Its official name is White Black, and the real pandas would be the Ueno Pandas, released in the 2000s, which not only has the color of a panda, but it even got the little hairs to go with them. 
nice. Obviously, nobody knows about these pairs anymore, and when you search for the Dump Pandas on Google, they have been completely overshadowed by the new Panda sneakers, which in reality ain't even nothing new. As you probably already know, Nike loves to recycle old models, and they don't have ass things. They also like to recycle colorways. And for the Dunks, they brought back several classic colorways from college basketball teams, and as you can imagine, this black and white colorway already existed over 30 years ago. Unfortunately, it's a colorway that we we had completely lost sight of, even though between 2000 and 2016, we had plenty of black and white dunks, but all of them were quite different from the famous Dunk Panda. What will bring this colorway back to life is certainly the collaboration between Nike and Kama Des Garcons in 2016 with this transparent Panda Dunk. And just a few months later, we would see the true return of this black and white colorway that is so popular today. But that really wasn't the case before, it was actually a pretty tough time for the Dunk Pandas. Tough time never lasts. Only tough people last. <laughs> So back in 2017, the Dunks was kinda chilling in the back of the closet. They were mainly for a specific niche of fans. But in 2020, things were totally different and the pair had gained a ton of popularity. Then Ambush came along and gave this colorway a whole new lease on life. And in 2021, the Dunk Panda made its debut and it suddenly was everywhere you look. By 2021, the Hot Top Dunks were way less popular and it was all about those low top skater or basketball inspired silhouettes. So when the low top Dunk Pandas dropped, it was a massive hit with sneakerheads. I mean, on Instagram, like 80% of y'all wanted to cop a pair, and everyone was after them. Retailers were pushing hard on them, and soon enough, the resale sites were jumping onto the hype too. The sneaker community had found their new favorite pair. But here's the thing, unlike the Jordan 1 Dark Mocha, which has remained a pair that's mainly worn and approved by the sneaker community, the Dunk Panda quickly became ultra mainstream and was worn by people who, uh, I'm not really trying to hate, but they didn't know nothing about the sneaker world. It was pushed hard on social media and became the go-to sneaker for TikTokers and Instagrammers and was front and center at any retailer that was lucky enough to stop the Dunk Panda. Man, even today, if you check out the best sellers on most resale sites without fail, you'll see the Dunk Panda at the top of the list of the most brought out pairs. So you get it? The reason why these Dunk Pandas became so popular is all thanks to the sneakerheads who went crazy over them and eventually made them a trend that everybody followed because they're shoes were designed for the masses. They're low cut and easy to slip on with a versatile colorway that you can rock with any baggy pants or cargos. They ain't too uncomfortable to wear even though the leather is a bit cheap and it creases very easily. But for somebody who doesn't know much about shoes, man they don't look too shabby. But with all the crazy resale prices that go up to $300, you think the shoes were super rare to justify that price tag, but in reality not at all, even one or two years ago. Nike just has always had this crazy strategy of producing a lot of shoes but only releasing them in concentrated phases and in different geographic areas. Basically, they restock in big waves and almost all the pairs are brought out instantly by resellers from around the world. They're given time to sell off the pairs and according to the resale sites, they sell pretty well. Oh boy, then Nike does it all over again and this whole charade has been going on for over two years now. Even though the shoes are way more accessible today, there's still resellers who won't let go and keep making a quick buck off of the panda. Beyond the numerous restocks of the dunks, where we don't even have the exact number of the pairs produced, honestly, if there were tens or even hundreds of millions, it wouldn't even surprise me. But there are also clones of that pair, like the Dunk World Champion, the Dunk Panda Next Nature, the Dunk Panda Disrupt 1 and 2, the Dunk Panda High Up, the Dunk Panda Pull Tab, and even with Nike by you, which usually doesn't let you even create cool colorways. You can make your own Dunk Panda, and that shows you how many there are. Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion 300 million billion. The Dunk Panda and all of its clones have probably generated at least a billion dollars in revenue for Nike. And don't think that I'm exaggerating, but let's not pretend that the shoe has not became a victim of its own success. The Pandas are heavily featured on retailers and reseller sites, as well as some counterfeit sites, where even the most basic knockoffs around 50 to 60 bucks are far from being shameful compared to the real product. So yes, as you might expect, many 
of the Dump Pandas that we see everywhere are just completely fake. Today, the Dump Panda is starting to resemble the worthy heir of the Feli Disruptor and its success with the general public, and specifically with middle schoolers who want to look like their favorite TikToker. Well, that might be the cooled off sneakerheads who have completely dissociated themselves from this particular colorway. On Instagram, we asked for opinions on the shoe, and while some complained about the quality or lack of effort on the color blocking, most people are just tired of seeing it everywhere. And there has been a serious reversal of opinion on this dunk. This shoe was once a big 80% cop a little over a year ago. Well, today the stats has almost been cut in half, where only 30% of you now appreciate the dunk pound. Whereas the dark mocha, it hasn't really moved, going from a scar that was roughly similar to the panda a year ago to a solid 70% today. Personally, it's a sneaker that I really never paid attention to, but I totally understand the hype around the model. Although I do find it quite surprising that so many people are willing to pay over $200 for a pair like this. But in the end, it's all good. It boosts the economy and the Dump Panda has probably been among the top 10 sneakers that generated the most money last year. If we take into account Nike sales, the reseller's profit, and also the counterfeit sites that have sold them by the truckload, this silhouette has probably generated tens of billions of dollars and we immediately understand why we see it everywhere. Honestly, all them niggas broke. Get out my sleep, put that shit on. You want pop something, that's you. Go ahead, do it how you do it. Step in that bitch, not going home. One of my ops got Peter roll. Step in the track, in the door close. Fall the fuck back, can't afford those. That's 3500 for a piece. 1700 for a half a piece. Don't got weed for you, stop.